Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, don't mind me. I'm just really into these twists that I put into my hair. Like, I feel real, I feel real poetic and I feel real in touch, in touch with the earth and in nature and stuff. I, I, that's, that's just how I feel. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to make this video because this is a topic that's been on my mind. I really feel like um, I feel like a lot of people who I've encountered not just my age but older people people my age people my dog this is what's crawling around why I keep having to look down say hey King say hey King um yeah um People my age, older people, people as a whole, um, a lot of people I've encountered really treat God and really treat um, God's grace as if it was a genie. And when I say genie, I mean, um, matter of fact, let's look at the definition for a genie. Alrighty, Google. Genie, as traditionally depicted, imprisoned within a bottle or an oil lamp, capable of granting wishes when summoned. Again, as traditionally depicted, imprisoned within a bottle or oil lamp, incapable of granting wishes when summoned. I feel like, um, and I've done it too. I've done it too. I just um, realized that I was doing it. So, we as Christians, or some of us who aren't Christians or haven't been saved and haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior just yet, but you identify with Christianity. Um, so yeah, we as Christians or as un-Christians or people who want to be Christian are, are always Christian. We, um, when we want things, when we want the new house, when we want the new car, when we want um, a man in some cases, when we want a woman, when we want a husband, when we want a wife, when we want um, a boyfriend, when we want a girlfriend, we summon God. We summon him. We, we want to pray for these things. Sometimes half of us haven't prayed before. Are we, we've prayed, but sparingly, sporadically. We'll pray every now and then. But when we want something, we pray consistently. So what happens is we we don't invite the presence of God into our life daily. We don't wake up asking God, what do you want me to do today to glorify your name? Even if it's something tiny, even if it's something huge, what can I do to live for you today? Who do you need me to speak to today? Who should I be praying for today? Who do I need to call today? We don't do that because we don't want the presence of God. We just want the gifts of God. And not even the spiritual gifts of God. We want the material things that we can feel, the things that we can show off on Instagram, the things that we can show off on Facebook. We want the car, we want the house, we want the job. We want the, the money to buy the bags, the, the clothes, the shoes. We want that for the world to see. We want that to add value to us. And this is why we pray for these things. We summon these things from God. We don't get in the presence. I'm not even gonna say we don't get into the presence of God until we want something because just because you're going to God to pray about this thing that you want it doesn't mean that you're in the presence of God it doesn't mean that just because you're praying doesn't mean that God is there with you so and I, it, this came to me I was I was talking to I was I, I actually wasn't talking to somebody the conversation came after but a few months ago I was in church and um the message was really a meat message. It wasn't a, um, a message about, um, oh, you're going to get your financial prosperity, you're going to get your car. It was really a meat message, something to convict you and to touch your soul. And as I looked around the church, um, it wasn't as live, it wasn't as rowdy as it would be if the pastor was up there saying, you know, um, clap, clap for your um your financial prosperity clap for your new car clap for your house you know shout shout and praise shout and praise it wasn't as live as it was during those services and i really grasped what was happening and i really grasped what i had been doing and 
I, I was like, wow, like, this is really touching me. This is convicting my spirit, but people around me are on the phone or, or texting or just not paying attention in general because they're not hearing the things that they want to hear. He's not um, preaching about you getting your new house. He's not preaching about you getting your new car. He's really trying to get down to the meat of your spirit, but your heart is so hardened to things like that that you don't want to hear that you want to hear about what God can give you what can you give me what wish can you grant me I'm not gonna summon you until you can give something to me I'm not gonna give anything to you you need to give to me as if God is a genie and as if he's not this this omnipresent awesome just spirit that you should want around you all the time even when you don't have any money even when your bank account is in the negative when your car is not working when you don't have the new shoes when you don't have the new lubes when you don't have the Giuseppe's that you see on Instagram you should still want his presence there because he's more than enough and I was I really had to look at myself I really had to reflect on myself on on all these years when I would really just pray either when something was wrong and somebody was hurt or in the hospital or two when I wanted something when I wanted a new car when I wanted to move to Atlanta when I wanted that house when I wanted to job wanted that job and God wouldn't hear from me until I wanted something I never went and said God what can what can I do for you what and you don't need me you don't I'm so insignificant and broken and I'm I'm just I'm just a speck in the bigger picture, but what do you need from me? What do you need me to do? Who do you need me to go reach out to? What do you need me to give? Who do I need to give to? And I'm, I'm, thank the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is amazing. I'm at that point now, but Chelsea years ago was all about me. What can you give to me? Like, I need to pray to you, to for you to give to me. When he's already gave me everything that I need, there's nothing else that I need but him because through him, through him is prosperity, through him is happiness, through him is fullness. And all of these material things that I wanted to fill up a void that, that in actuality would never be filled until I got filled in him. So on to the conversation that I was having, I was having a conversation with somebody and um, they're, they're actually going through a breakup and... I asked the person, what did you pray? Did you pray about it? Did you bring it to God? Have you brought your feelings before God? And, and they were like, I don't, I don't pray about things like that. I don't bring stuff like that to God. And it, it my, I wasn't judging, but <clears throat> it took me aback. It, it, it had me like, you know, I was taken back a little bit because I, I know this person for sure to pray to God about things that they want material things things that I can feel things that I can show to other people um I I got this um I, I God blessed me with this this new iPhone 6 plus he blessed me look at how blessed I am look at me look at me God is giving to me I am getting the things that I want so I am blessed therefore my life is great my life is awesome everything is well when it's not nothing nothing i mean if the only if the only reason you get down on your knees at night to pray is for a new car for a new iphone 6 and you never once mention anybody else you never once tell god to send you you really need to evaluate what's going on on the inside of you you really need to evaluate your relationship with god because my conversation with god when I was 20, 21 years old, and my conversation with God now that I'm 24, about to be 25, is completely different. When I get on my knees and pray at night, if I'm asking for myself, I'm asking for focus. I'm asking for clarity. I'm asking for wholeness. There's nothing material in there. I'm praying for my friends. I'm praying for my family. I'm, I'm praying for people that I don't even know. And... <clears throat> now that I'm really on I'm I, I'm really starting to understand things more so in the spirit realm than in the worldly realm I'm understanding the bigger picture so now when I'm on Instagram and I'm seeing people post about um the shoes and the purses and the outfits it doesn't make me go I'm about to go buy, buy that I want that or if I don't have the money to get that I'm not going to pray to God for the money to get that because now I'm just like I don't want those things I don't need those things I really just want God like I just want more of him and I ask for more of him every night more of him every day and I'm not saying anything's wrong with wanting the nice things wanting the um 
purses, the shoes, or the cars, but don't make those things your idol. Don't make those things fill up your void. Don't do that because that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. A few months ago, that's what I was doing. Any new shoe that came out, any new purse that came out, any new, it will be in my closet. And my friends could tell you, it will be in my closet. And going into 2015, I did a shopping fast, a 21 day shopping fast. And after I came off the fast, God really worked on me during that. And he showed me that I was using these things to fill a void, that I didn't need these things. And it's crazy because when I was on my fast, temptation was getting to me. And people would be sending me like sale flyers and, and shoes that they knew were my style. And I'm like, as soon as I get off my fast, I'm going to buy those things. But now that I'm off my fast, I haven't bought any of those things. Because I don't need those things. Because that void that I had that I was filling up with all the nude pointy toe shoes and all those purses and all those everything that was going to fade away in a few months. It's now being filled by something that's so much richer. Something that's so much more whole. Something that this world can't give me. So when I see people online saying that I'm going to pray God bless me with those shoes. I'm going to pray God bless with those purses. I pray that that's not the only thing that you're praying for. I'm praying that the only that's not the only time that you summon God. Don't summon God. Don't keep God in a box. Don't keep God in a, in, in a bottle and only go rub that bottle when you want something. Rub that lamp when you want something. Give me something, God. Give me something. Give to God. Sometimes you need you need to just be a vessel. Be a vessel, and we might be broken vessels, I'm a broken vessel, but be a vessel to God. Fill somebody else up sometimes. Let God fill you up so you can fill somebody else up sometimes. It's not just all about us. So please don't only summon God when you want something from this world. Because what God can give you is greater than what this world can offer. So, yeah. Be blessed, everybody.